guys it's me again um see i told you you just can't get rid of me anyway i just feel like being a little chatty currently i did have my glasses on no really i did have my glasses on see it's like this this is what i look like with this pair of glasses i have two pair of glasses once the black and white then there's the peach one but because of the way my camera sits if i don't take it off you can see just about everything on my computer screen among other things so yeah there we go anyway i'm just thinking i've been talking to some of the more interesting locations in my tiny little town and talked to them about possibly doing some little films on them there we've got you know your basic beer brewery that everybody's probably already seen you know it's a little pub brewery but it's a really cute place and then there's the distillery in town that's craft distilling. If you've ever run into um, a brand called Glacier 45, that's our distillery. And oh, it's wonderful, delicious stuff. Just ask my husband, he loves it. Um, the other thing I've been thinking about is we've got some really nice little eateries here. One of them reminds me of a 1950s 60s thereabouts diner it's wonderful now where i grew up in alexandria virginia we used to have a place called dixie pig they sold all kinds of barbecue stuff and little pig here in oregon they have a big traeger smoker grill out in the back and they do pig and beef and chicken and turkey and all manner of other things but one of the things that's most fun about the place is the decor. Some of the tables are seriously 1950s dinette sets. They're great. There are fantastically smart aleck signs everywhere. They've got little pig statues. They all make manner and description all around the place. It's a hoot. I love it. Great food, decent prices. It's a good thing. Now, I'm thinking about doing that kind of as a series. We'll see how it goes. I've got, I want to get one of those little handle things, the phone gimbals, before I start trying to do those. Because I, the camera I currently have is USB connected to my computer all the time, so I can't really take it. I don't have something to plug it into that I can use to run it. So I want to see if I can get one of those little gimbal packages that... Uh, let you haul things around, put a little microphone on it and a little light and that kind of thing. They're very cute. Um, one of the other things I want to talk about, and this is a case of, is it just me? I picked up the Maybelline New Look Dewy and Smooth Fit Me. Okay? I have tried this now with two different primers. And currently it is on naked skin okay it feels wonderful even on the naked skin the problem is right through here it starts breaking up almost immediately I can leave it unpowdered I can powder it and it breaks up anyway right through all these lovely lines now look this is a 60 year old mug with a lot of sun damage got a lot of texture through here got a lot of texture through here you know, it's, it, it is what it is. It's crepey. It's old skin. It's also skin from somebody who has lost well over 150 pounds. So, yeah, there's a lot of saggy stuff. There's a lot of loose stuff. But I don't get it why this has to break up right in here. I don't get it. I don't understand it. And I've tried it several times. This is like the fourth or fifth day I've been wearing this, trying to figure it out. So I'm going, I haven't really started looking at anybody else's 
reviews of it yet, but I'm just asking, is it just me? The other, is it just me, was something that I was really hoping was going to be a good thing for me. It's the Revlon liquid eyeshadow with the sparkle end. The sparkle end works like a dream. It's beautiful. No problem. I have put the opaque solid color on my eyes. I've tried the inner third. I've tried the outer third. I've tried half on the outer side. I've tried naked skin. I've tried the primer potion. I've tried the white um, concealer. I've tried just foundation. This stuff, as pretty as it is, that's just gorgeous, right? As pretty as it is, once it's on my eyes, now granted, we got to remember these are old, wrinkly, crepey eyes. Once it's on my eyes, it starts, but I can sit here for like 10 minutes with my eyes closed, waiting for this to dry dries. I touch it. It's dry. Within a few minutes of starting to move my eyes, it's bunching up in the creases. It's bunching up in the hood. It's peeling off of the lid to bunch up into the hood. I've tried everything I can think of. Now, like I said, I absolutely love the sparkle side of this. The sparkle side works like a dream. It's just gorgeous. You can do a fine line with it. You can put some of it over other colors. You can do all of that stuff. You can put it any way you want to put it. I mean, it's gorgeous. It's a beautiful gold sparkle. It's lots and lots of glitter, and it's fine glitter. It's beautiful. Goes on easy, dries down quickly. You're not stuck sitting forever. And it stays put. I don't understand why the the solid color refuses. I mean, it's a nice metallic. And it just will not stay on these eyes. So I'm asking. It's like, now, I've only tried the olive green version. Which, what was the name of this color? Do, 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 do. Desert Dazzle. So, yeah, it's got kind of a cactus OD green kind of thing going on here. But it's mildly metallic. A little bit of a gold shimmer to it. It's got a little gold shift to it. But is anybody else having trouble with this Revlon dual color? Because it's just, it's annoying. Yeah. I, I could do without annoying. I don't need annoying. <laughs> anyway, if you know anything about either of these, leave me something in the comments. We'll start a conversation. Um, if you like the idea of seeing some places in a little town that are kind of interesting, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, I've got just hit the Salvation Army again, so I'm going to be checking to... Now, don't jump if you're not thrilled with Salvation Army. I'm not good with their politics, but it's the only game in town unless I want to drive 45 miles to the next town over. And currently, the highway is blocked because of snow. It's not going to happen anytime soon. So, thrift store is whatever's in town. And I hit it up for some clothes. I've got some nifty stuff. I'm going to be showing that in a little while. I'm going to do my haul. Yay! love my hauls. They're fun. This one's mostly shirts. So, yeah. Um, no pants this time. I think I've got one pair of shoes in there. I got a little crazy. What can I say? Anyway, um, what else am I doing? Oh, yeah. I have discovered what it is like to have to stop on a really slick mountain road and put chains on my tires. We left our house headed for, God help me, a almost two-hour drive to get to the nearest dentist 
that works with my son's insurance. We have to cross a place called Dixie Pass and then do the summit of Tipton Mountain to get to the other side of the ridge to get into the other valley where this other town is. We got part way up one rise to Dixie Pass and it the snow was too thick. We pulled off at a little cutout where they tell you to pull off and put your chains on and put the chains on and decided we weren't going any further. We were a half hour out from the house and could not get any further. So we put the chains on and very carefully came back down that mountain <laughs> and then got back to where it was clear enough and pulled the chains off and then went home. I haven't had to deal with chains since I was a little kid. The D.C. area stopped doing chains a long time ago. Chains, studded tires, that kind of thing. It was tearing up the roads too bad. And we they just stopped doing it once there was the, you know, the all season and radial snows and all this other stuff. But here, the snow and ice can get bad enough that they don't care if you've got snow tires, you know, specialty tires, all season radio. They don't care. You either have studded tires or you have chains or they will pull you over and make you very unhappy. The cops around here don't play. And considering the drop off on the sides of some of the roads, you can't entirely blame them. Now, this was an interesting thing because it's been, I've only ridden before in a car that had chains on it. Like I said, I was a little kid, and this is the first time I had to drive with chains. Well, we've got the cable sets and not the chain chains. But even with the cable sets, you're just rattle, 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 rattle. The car is rumbling, especially once you get back onto dry pavement. Um, it's just, it's unnerving. And... Even though there were a few people who were locals who were driving like maniacs with their studded tires, I stuck to a speed I felt comfortable with, better known as it wasn't a crawl. You could actually get past me if you were so determined. But if you wanted to stay behind me, you were not going more than 30 miles an hour. Not while I was on those chains. Anyway, that was my interesting thing for the week. What's your things like today? I know some of the East Coasters are getting snowed in again. Thank you, Dougie. That was my little dog going by with the curtain again. Little buzzard. <laughs> anyway, we're just kind of hanging out at home. We did a couple of errands. And there's not much else going on right now. Except for listening to the little dog's tappy toes going by. i got to trim his toenails. Somebody want to come help me? He's squirmy about it. Anyway, let me know if you have any ideas whether or not you would want to see something like the little eateries and some of the other really interesting little places. We're right at one of the depots for the Oregon Trail. So, yeah, there's a lot of history here. Not nearly the length of history that we're used to from the East Coast, but a lot of history. I mean, we've got places around here that are ghost towns that originally were gold rush towns. We've got all kinds of nifty stuff. And let's be real, there's only so many times I can put makeup on before my eyes start to go itchy from wiping it off and putting it on and wiping it off and putting it on. The, um, the idea of doing a series like that, what do you think? Really, tell me. If you've had a different experience with the Maybelline Fit Me Dewy and Smooth, let me know. Tell me what you have done different. How do you get it to stay smooth? With the Revlon Photo Ready iArt TM, if you've had a better experience with this than I have, tell me what you did. Tell me what you think of it. I'm still trying to figure this one out for myself. Now, 
I'm going to be trying also to do a few more things that are more geared toward not the necessary combination of colors, but applications of makeup to persons of my age and well, a little younger and possibly a little older because let's be real, the quote unquote mature skin needs some different handling than young and dewy and yeah, that kind of thing. It's like I can put all kinds of colors on all day long, but that's not necessarily going to help somebody who's got mature skin with all the wrinkles and stuff to know how to put on makeup so that it's not necessarily accentuating all of the texture and the wrinkles and the pores and all of that. I mean, how many people out there who have a quote unquote mature skin realize that you need a very lightweight foundation because if you're using a thick thick heavy foundation it's just gonna get cakey and break up along these lines worse than the than the than this one i mean this one breaks up enough but how many know that how many know that you have to be very judicious with your powder to keep from ending up with dry and cakey stuff all up under here that shows off all that texture and all those wrinkles? It takes a little practice. Anyway, have a good day wherever you are. Be good.